Hey, this is David Dash from Dash Off-Road, and today we're fitting up the Topro Elite from Red Arc. Uh, I've fitted three of, well, this will be the third one of these that I've fitted now, so throughout the video I'll show you why I keep going for these Topro Elites. Uh, two of them were into my patrol. If you want to see why there was two that went into my patrol, have a look at the video up here. You can see my Red Arc Topro Elite install into that car. But now we're doing it into a ute, which is going to be a different concept because when I put it in my uh, patrol, I put the whole system in the back because that made sense for a wagon. Now we're doing a ute, so it's going to be a whole different thought path. Um, last time I just had this unit here. This time, Red Ark have sent me another box. Look at this. It's got so much stuff in it. Alright, as I was saying, these are all the bits and pieces that come with it. The bracket, heaps of cable ties, looks pretty comprehensive to me. This is what I'm used to, is just dealing with the unit on its own. That's the little sucker there. Another, let's see what's in here, eh? The wiring. And I used to love this unit in the patrol because it had an ethernet cable, they've changed that to this. So, yeah, it's a bit more proprietary now. Um, before you could just get a, um, I think it's a, what do they call it, RJ45 or something like that, J45 connector, and you could put this wherever you wanted to. So, a bit more specific, I'm gonna have to use this cable. It's probably, let's see. It's probably, say, a meter long. It's gonna work, this is gonna be fine, but it looks like you do have to do it their way, opposed to me just working it out myself. Um, the other part I like about this is the unit can hide under the dash somewhere. Uh, it doesn't have to be knocking against your knee or anything like that. So we can conceal that somewhere, and all that's gonna be seen is this little switch somewhere on the dash or wherever, wherever we decide to put it. So that's not gonna be in the way, it's not gonna be intrusive. Last time I put this by my right knee uh, and the issue with that is when I was towing something and I was coming down like say a full drive track and I would have loved my wife in the passenger seat to just be able to press that to, to break the trailer and not the car. Um, I was too busy with my hands on the wheel so I think I'm going to mount this in more of a central location this time um, just so we can have that, uh, you know, someone else can press the button if they need to or get instructed to. I guess I'll start pulling the car apart now, yeah. All right. As I was saying, the instructions are really good. Shows you abs exactly step by step what you have to do. Pulled all the glove box out, kick panels, trims. <laughs> it's funny, because this is a new car, I'm actually like using all the proper tools and taking care not to bust any clips. It's very, very unlike me. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Driver side now. We need to pull this section down. This is, um, so there's two bolts where the bonnet latch is. Then you grab it and rip sort of from the top left over this side. Don't go from underneath. That's where the airbag is. But now we need to just get this out of the way, basically. So we'll disconnect all of this and um, give us some access here. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. These clips are not intuitive at all. I've ripped enough cars apart to know that you just sort of pinch or push or do something, but... I don't know how these come out. I reckon I might just take these screws out just to get it all apart and cut that. That's going to be easier. Looks like the car. As I was saying before, I want to put the um, the switch or the controller somewhere central for both passengers. So I reckon down here where the cup holder is, in this recommended spot, um, I'll pull it out. So this, I think, just rips out and do this one-handed. Two hands would be easier. <laughs> you can see how that's going to work anyway. I'll use two hands to get that out and then I'll set that up too. I know I was having a bit of a giggle about the instructions before, but I've got to say, these are the best instructions I've ever seen. Like, everything step by step. There's templates, so now I cut that template out. I stick it on here. I drill exactly those size holes where they ask. Like it's, it's really comprehensive.
that was pretty easy to do. Um, I had you had to drill a three and a half mil hole at the top here, but the old red arc had a pin that went through to locate this one didn't. Uh, anyway, trick for new players: turn this all the way to the left as far as it can go, then get the the dial, put it on zero, and fit that to the top, and then you know that that's going to be on zero. This is a comprehensive kit that they supply. Ev everything that you need is in there. If you are a DIYer and you want confidence about what uh, you're going to do on a public holiday because shops are shut and you can't run out to get other stuff, get this kit. If you're an installer that has to actually get this done in the 120 minutes um, because you're charging a customer for it, everything's in it. I really, I was already a fan of the product, but now I'm really a big fan of this install kit. Wiring time. Have a look at this for a comprehensive wiring loan that they supplied. Everything's already terminated. Circuit breaker is already here underneath there. Um, earth wire ready, terminated, ready to go. All the sheath in place. Even a grommet to go through the firewall already located in the correct position. Um, this end goes to the red arc unit. That's the only bit you have to assemble. I don't know why they didn't do that, but. Um, maybe that'll come clear later. Then everything is already ran. This will go right to the back of the car and I imagine to um, the factory loom at the back somewhere. Got to be happy with that. The hardest bit to all this is getting through the firewall to be honest because there's a thick carpet. Um, I'll show you down here. No, they're not light, not great. Do yourself a favour, get the longest drill bit you can, drill through, and um, that rips out all of the foam and it clears a nice easy path. And then I've stuck the longest screwdriver I own through the firewall from the inside. Hopefully you can see it. Oh, I'm trying to show you there. I'll now tie, or um, I'll tape on the wires to that screwdriver, pull the screwdriver through, and um, that's how I'll get through the firewall. That's been the hardest bit so far. Okay, getting through the firewall, gee, that was hard. Not Red Ark's fault, it's just getting through a firewall. It's just the way it is. I know why there wasn't a terminal on here. If you buy the Red Ark, the unit itself, yeah, yeah, the plug comes with this on there, but then you have to work out all the wiring and the loom. That would never ever fit through the firewall, so you'd have to pull it apart which they kindly have already done. I shouldn't have doubted them. Um, so all I have to do is basically clip them in here, run it to the other side, um, clip that into the Red Arc ECU, then run this wire back to the center um, where I'm gonna have the little toggle switch, um, send the wires down the back and pretty much home and hose. This is going really well. Yes, this angle does look weird because I'm laying under my car on the ground where I've spent a decent amount of time of late. Um, we're at the last part, so I tied, um, cable tied everything to the chassis from the front engine bay all the way to the back down the passenger side chassis rail. I'm not going to show you that, that's easy. The last bit, and I want to show you how simple this is, is I'm going to put the Osmo on the ground here and hope this picks it up well. We're looking at the spare wheel at the very back here. Just try and get the best angle possible for you. See this cable here? This is the one that um, controls all the braking and all that sort of stuff, indicators, everything. Um, this gets disconnected. So now we've got male and female there. I'm trying to keep my hands out the way so you can see. This is the Red Arc cable. And this just plugs in in series. Like that's how simple this is. Like so, like, so, of course, I'm going to cable tie that up so it's all out of the way. And then this blue wire goes to the loom, um, your trailer plug loom. I'll solder them together. And there's even a fancy little connector that Red Art gave me for that as well. Um, I'll fix up my 7-pin um, connector at the back. Then we're ready to go and start towing something. It really is that easy.
Well, now that's all done. We just need this Corona thing to finish so I can get out of here.